First and foremost, all of the footage you will see here is from an alpha build of the game. Anything and everything may be subject to change. Almost all the footage is of my own gameplay during my time with it, minus a single clip that Epic has allowed me to use. So welcome to Paragon. Paragon is a third person, free to play MOBA that is currently in closed alpha. It is being developed by Epic Games and it'll be available for PC and PlayStation 4 and have a paid early access in spring and an open beta in summer of this year. The game runs on Unreal Engine 4 and as you can see is already taking a gorgeous shape. The game looks damn nice. Something in particular I wanted to point out is that it is very easy to look at while playing. One concern that I had at first glance is whether or not it would be easy to understand what is happening around you. Color and action clutter is actually dealt with quite well. Just like any other game in the MOBA genre, you'll learn with experience what each character does and what they are capable of doing in terms of mobility and kill potential. Something I did not like so far is the map. It doesn't give you enough information, especially when it comes to the jungle. The jungle thus far is definitely the most incomplete aspect of the game, and again, still an alpha, so it's not super surprising. As of right now, new players will definitely have a hard time navigating through the jungle and the map does not do you any favors when it comes to this. The biggest difference between now and launch will almost certainly be these two features, so for now, all we can do is wait and see. Something I do know for sure is that the heroes are pretty sweet. We currently have 13 heroes available to us, and I've had the chance to play 8 of them. You have your standard variations, the Disruptor Tanked, Caster Mages, Stealth Assassins, Range Physical Carries, Bruisers, and as of now, one dedicated support. I won't discuss balancing when it comes to these guys right now because it's unnecessary. Nerfs and buffs will come and go, so for now, telling you Twin Blast, for example, felt incredibly strong is a moot point. A huge aspect of the game that was talked about more than a handful of times during our playtest was the speed of the heroes and the pace of the game as a whole. A match lasts just about as long as you'd expect, anywhere between 25 to 40 minutes on average. Which sounds about right if you ask me, but what some people did not like is how slow some of the movement in fights felt. Paragon is very tactical when it comes to maneuvering through a fight or from lane to lane. What you see here is me entering a travel mode. During travel mode, you move much quicker. But if struck, it becomes snared for a moderate time. Here I'm chasing the enemy Muriel and land my shot, snaring her down and securing the kill. Speaking of landing shots, this is how characters are going to be played. Whether it's melee or ranged, you will have to manually aim and release each shot or punch. The hitboxes in this game are very true to the objects you want to hit. Abilities can be dodged by jumping over them. You will have to aim upward to hit that mid-air target. This leaves a lot of outplay potential, but brings me to my next point. While you're firing or meleeing, your movement speed is drastically slowed. Some might find this clunky at first, but will understand why this has to be the way it is once you've had some time with the game. I called Paragon's maneuverability tactical because its combat style is very offense-defense swing oriented. Is it worth it to drop out of travel mode to begin harassing? Will using this gap closing ability put you in a favorable position if you use it to attack instead of saving the cooldown for escaping? Again, these are things that'll just develop over time. But as of right now, I actually rather like the pace of things and where the game is headed with them. Now what does feel slow for me is lane rotations and getting back to lane. The map, Agora, feels very large. The lanes are wide, the jungle, although not yet represented appropriately, is vast and gives you a lot of options. The towers and the cores to destroy them are separate entities, so the space around them feels massive. Again, things like this are something you'll just pick up and learn with experience, but getting players to that experience requires them to be willing to play and learn long enough. People who are experienced with the MOBA genre will pick up on these things rather quickly, but I fear for new players who will see this game and assume it's a third-person shooter rather than a MOBA, especially considering this will be available for PlayStation 4. Hopefully, a very fleshed-out tutorial will be available for new players in the game. Not just for learning their game, but for learning MOBA as a whole. Lastly, and most importantly, is itemization and deck building. Here, you can see my deck for Twin Blast. There will be starter decks available to you for each character, but as you play more and unlock different, more unique cards, you'll be able to itemize to a more specific playstyle that you prefer. Here you see the equipment cards. These are the items that you'll be purchasing in-game. You purchase these with points that are earned each time you level up, so leveling up and currency are one and the same. Doing objectives and getting kills gives you experience, and you use the experience points for your items. There are also harvesting wells you can capture and farm for experience, but this video won't go into too much detail about those. 
we'll cover that in the future. So you have your equipment cards and your upgrade cards. Each equipment has three slots. You fill those slots with upgrades. Upgrades usually give you a single stat, things like cooldown reduction, physical damage, energy damage, penetrations, you get it. Each equipment has three slots to be filled and once completely augmented will give you a special bonus. There will also be card packs you'll be able to unlock the more you play and opening said packs will give you more variety of cards to put into your deck. This aspect of the game absolutely scares the shit out of me. When you load into a fresh game of Paragon, you will potentially have different cards than your opponent. I'm no game developer, but my guess is that it's going to be a huge responsibility and difficult task for the balancing team to make sure that these cards don't create large gaps between casual and competitive players. What happens when someone's deck is flat out better than yours? They have a wider card pool than you and thus are given a wider advantage over itemization and counterplay. The dynamic of a deck building system is very cool to me and definitely adds more variety on how games of Paragon will be played, but only time will tell if this system will be fair to all players. I like being rewarded in games for putting in time and effort. I do not like having an advantage over my opponent before the game even begins because I have an equipment card that is strictly better than the card that they have. This applies to the inverse as well. In conclusion, I think Paragon has huge potential. Getting to talk to some of the developers and the steps that they want to take moving forward is giving me a lot of confidence that they will not allow this game to be a disappointment. Right now, I can tell you that personally, it is very fun and has enough depth to potentially be a major player in the MOBA scene. But that is all for now. I hope you're excited to get your hands on the game in the upcoming months. And if you have any questions that I didn't cover already, feel free to leave a comment and I'll get to you when I can. If you're watching this video on the date of its release, I'm actually at MAGFest right now. So be patient and I'll answer what I can, when I can. Thanks for watching. I hope you're excited. I hope to see you next time.